Good evening. Uh, I want to give an update on uh, the Gulf Coast project. Um, been doing a bit of fiberglass finally. You can see where these pickaxe holes in the bow. Getting those sanded down and prepped for uh, some fiberglass matting. Um, I can't get to the other side because of the foam. So my first step is going to be I'm going to use some um, fiberglass reinforced uh, body filler putty to kind of smooth out where the, the foam is there and kind of tuck it into the, the edges to kind of get help it kind of lock in. Um, the foam, uh, because it was a pickaxe hole, is about, you know, and from like two to four inches deep on each one of these. Um, I just use like some regular, um, like some spray foam to kind of fill up the hole and then shave it off on the outside. Um, and that, I mean, the, it, that's not adding a whole lot of flotation to the boat, of course, but just kind of filled that void. Don't have to worry about it. Um, if you come to the back side here, you can see that there were two holes in the bottom of the boat that I actually have covered up now. Um, these, these are also pickaxe holes, one on that side and one over here that I was able to get to the other side, so I was able to glass them from, from uh, both sides with the, the typical method of going um, a big sheet down to a small, small sheet uh, of uh, the, the, the glass fabric. So both of those are good. Um, and you can see up here, uh, one of the big changes is where the other side over here where it had that big punch out on top of the deck. Uh, I cut it out as well as the same side over here and I'm planning to, instead of where they had just the, those round uh, ports there, I'm, I'm going to cut out some uh, some wood panels that will screw and, and seal over these, these holes. And for one that makes it so there's a lot less um, glass work I have to do on this side over here. You can see there's still some stuff on, on the corners that I've got to get patched in, but not nearly as much. And the big advantage of this is that for one, it gives me better access to get parts um, attached on the sides of the boat here. Um, and as well as, we'll see a big change here, we've got some new wood on the transom. Um, so this is half inch marine plywood. And um, I didn't get a video of getting it all cut out, but you can see I cut everything and left a, a lip of the original glass there and cut all the wood out and cut away. There was a little skin of the inside uh, fiberglass that I cut away entirely. So I had just, just a corner in there to work with. And then on the top side, you can see where I cut out to where this wood could just drop in from the top. And these openings here and here, as well as here, you can see I've glassed over, over the that old port that was on the side here and added this middle hole here that a couple things is I think the main purpose they had of this hole was it allowed them to bolt that motor mount to the back here which I don't think is necessary for for the transom being as small as it is um, I don't need that big of a motor for this boat just for a trawling motor so um, I'm just planning on, on it clamping over the, uh, the back of the boat here. And um, it's like I said, it's not gonna take much, but this hole will be a, a help here in that if anything falls down in the bilge, I, I've got no way to get to it back here. Although now, now I do, because um, I got this little hatch I can open up and um, nail me, me to reach in there and grab whatever burrito or something that rolls down into the bilge on me. Um, but the other thing too is that this enables me to get in and actually bolt the uh, the rudder hinge in. Because I can, you can see that, that the holes for the top rudder hinge are there, that, that one's easy. But the bottom rudder hinge are inside the bilge there. So I needed something to be able to get some nuts and sealant on the other sides of those screws. And then uh, these, 
side openings too are going to give me access into that corner. So with this plywood, my uh, once I got it, I made, made a pattern out of some cardboard, I traced it out and double checked it, made sure it was the right size. The old plywood actually had about almost a one inch gap all along here and, and I'm not sure why they did that. It, the wood didn't come all the way to the edge of the corner. Um, and so I did this one, I made it a, a bit closer. It's over from, in some spots it's touching, others it's got about a quarter inch gap. A couple spots it might be closer to half inch gap. But there's less, there's less room for, uh, or there's less space there. And um, what I did uh, after I got this cut out and I kind of test fitted a couple times, I went ahead and did a, uh, a, a nice thick layer of glass with uh, matting on the inside. You can see it there. So th this this inside surface here is uh, is glassed. Um, the outside, I've just done a little bit of, of, of resin, no, no, no matting or anything yet. And when I put it in, um, I had to get some fluid adhesive all the way through here on, and then to get this thing in place, and then get it screwed in before anything hardened. So what I ended up using was some, uh, it's, it's caulking marine adhesive. And the reason I went with that is because I, this is not structural at this point. This is essentially just filling that, that gap kind of in, in this corner right here where I can't really get to anything. And what's actually going to make this strong is that I will now follow this up with um, more of the, uh, the fiberglass reinforced filler to fill in that seam all all on the inside here, and then follow that up with resin and and the fiberglass fabric to kind of bed that in and get a nice strong corner on the inside. Once that's all glassed, then I'm gonna come back and I've left this thick right now to keep it strong. I want, I'm trying to keep this thing in shape. Um, all these screws will come out. These are just temporary until it actually gets glassed in place. But um, once that inside edge is taken, I'm going to grind this thinner and even grind it back here a little ways and start laying in glass on the outside as well. So this had about, uh, I mean, about 3 sixteenths to a quarter inch thick glass on the outside. Um, the inside was a lot thinner. It looked like it was maybe just like a single layer of, of matting. Um, but that the that fiberglass on the inside and outside corners really gives this thing its strength, and so that that putty it feels a, a little cheap, but that that's at this point is really just sealant and just filling the void. It, it's not really going to be holding this together, so I I, I don't feel too too cheap on that one. Um, and you can see I've already started kind of tapering it back up here, so that this corner is going to come straight across here. You can see here I did a little too too low on the plywood here, and so um, in this place as well as between these panels, I'm gonna be putting more of the uh, the body filler putty to kind of fill in this strip along here and fill in kind of that that gap between these two pieces. I kind of wanted to to do that whenever I was putting in down here as well. But because this thing was sliding down and not just laying in this way, it would have been really hard to do that. So uh, plan is to get this inside corner all glassed in. So it's, it's at least have some strength to it. And I'm going to kind of wedge these apart so I can kind of tuck some putty down in there, which is, is really just helping keep this from doing this. Um, and there are places over here that, that these pieces are, are already touching. They're, 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 it's not. You see, it's got about a quarter inch gap in some places, but that's not all the way through. It kind of varies. And uh, when I took the old transom out, I found that they'd, they'd essentially done the same thing. The, the back of the, the cockpit here was kind of irregular, and they just used like gobs of body filler putty that hardened, you know, solid and kind of gave support between these pieces. So I'm just planning to do the same thing on this one. Um, it, it, it's again one of those things where if I had 
nothing but time and, and resources, it, it would have been better to just split the boat apart, top to bottom, so that I could actually lay in this this plywood, maybe like from the from the inside or from the outside, and then put these pieces back together. But I think this will produce satisfactory. Um, it's not a full-on yacht; it's a day sailor, which I don't plan to be taking out in any hurricanes. So I think it'll hold up, or I'll be proven wrong one way or the other. But anyway, that's been the bulk of the the progress is uh, getting this transom started um, getting the kind of miscellaneous holes glassed in um, and uh, I don't have it here but I've also was able to get the uh, the rudder rebuilt um, it was pretty well rotted out and you can see that this is right here is all that remains of the old rudder it was it was dirt um, but I had enough of it there to get some dimensions, and I used some of the same half-inch marine ply to uh, make new new cheeks. And I got a little more sanding to do on them, but then the, the next step is I want to encase them in epoxy. Um, so that uh, I want to try to do kind of maintenance-free sealing on them. And I'm planning to do the same on all this woodwork as, as well. I, I believe this, this is teak, and it doesn't... And I say that because it doesn't appear to have any rot, it just has a lot of wear. Um, and it looks like maybe sun damage. There are places where I'm not sure if this is from the wood swelling out, or if that's just this, there, there's that much wear on this outside surface. But the wood is it's still, I think, strong enough for what I'm doing. So the plan is to do a little bit of sanding on it, uh, kind of get back to a, a natural color, and then encase it in epoxy. I know teak is is kind of naturally uh, rot resistant and doesn't have to have all that extra sealing on it, but I'm essentially using the epoxy to fill in the the voids on it. And uh, I mean, it, I could just replace it all as well, but since I'm we're going to have the, the the epoxy out for the uh, the plywood parts, I figure I'll, I'll try to save these teak pieces as well, which they're not on there, but the um, the handles on top of the house and some of the woodwork for the sides of the companionway and there's some trim inside the cockpit as well, or excuse me inside the the cabin as well that that's all that same teak wood that I'll do the same um, uh, epoxy treatment on um, I've also started sanding the top part of the deck here um, it's all kind of got that same kind of sun damaged powdery white effect on it but it's all kind of just paint deep it's not really into the fiberglass so I'm sanding it down and wire brushing these grip mats because I can't really sand them smooth I want them to stay grippy so I'm just wire brushing the, the loose paint flex out of it and kind of going around and getting any these little chips puttied over I'm gonna sand those smooth and the first step is I'm gonna hit this all with uh, um, a marine primer it's, it's a two-part epoxy primer that will uh, give a nice base for the paint uh, if you see there, there's another spot right here where it looks like so, somebody hit something on the deck so that that's been fixed and this part I just have to sand this part right here um, right here and then it, it'll be be ready um, but once this top deck is primered um, my plan is at this point that all the area you see it's white will stay white but then the blue part on top of the boat I want to do a, a tan color instead um, kind of to break it up and, and it'll be a little less bright um, but I, I mainly just want to do the top side of the boat right now because that, that's the part that has the sun damage um, and it, it, that's where most of the hardware is going to be mounting so if I can get it painted I can get, start getting the hardware back in place um, the bottom I want to paint as well, but it's not as big of a deal because um, that that paint isn't as bad a shape. But it, it will it will get painted too, though. Um, I think I'll do the same thing. I'll get get a coat of that epoxy primer, and um, I'm thinking about doing it in the, uh, with a waterline across it, which I can't find any trace of a waterline 
from before. So I'll have to generate one with some measurements. But um, I'm still kind of thinking I'll probably stick with the, the blue color for the the top side paint and uh, I don't know do a traditional brown or red or something for the for the uh, bottom coat um, but yeah uh, so little bits of progress step by step uh, if you see in here that there was one of the uh, flotation bricks was knocked out and I got that glued in as well before I put the transom in I want to make sure all this inside stuff was was done while it was easy to get to so now all, the only inside stuff I have left to do is to glass that inside corner now that the transom is in place and um, once it's glassed inside and out I'll come back and I can drill the holes for the uh, the rudder hinges uh, the holes for the, um, the the lower drain and the two in the back of the cockpit and I'll drill those oversized and then glass them again so it has a nice uh, layer of glass between the hole and the wood. Um, but anyway, there's that. Um, we started doing a little bit of figuring on the, uh, the rigging as well. Um, uh, if you can see, I got a, one of my mysteries I was trying to figure out is how the, the mast was going to mount on the boat because it wasn't really clear compared to other boats I've seen. But it had this piece right here uh, on, stuck to the mast step and I found it was, uh, I needed to turn it down, it was too big a diameter, but otherwise it slid right into that little slot there. And so that gives kind of a hinge point for me to raise the mast up with. And um, I have all the, the mass stay hardware here. Um, although I might have to change the, the lengths on some of these cables, so I'll cut them and add some turnbuckles and make that work. Um, but the other thing is once the transom's complete, I want to make a, um, oh, what you call it, the, the prop to put on the back side of the boat to uh, hold up the back side of the, of the mast whenever it's in transit. And um, so that way it's not resting on top of the house here. You can see we got, we got the one for the front side of the trailer. I just need one to put on the back side of the boat, as well as I want to make a, a little um, gin hoist or gin pole or a little A-frame to assist in, in raising the mast. And uh, so once the, the transom's done, I have those pieces made. I can put the mast back up and kind of mock it up so I can start filling in some blanks and uh, rigging in dimensions and all that. Um, the the boom and the mast here are not that bad a shape. There, there's some some stuff I got to replace. A lot of the uh, the blocks and pulleys um, are okay, but the actual pulleys themselves, the the, the um, they got a lot of kind of nylon and plastic on them that, that they're kind of sun sun damaged, and so those will have to be replaced. Um, the cap on the mast is still decent, but I'll have to do a little bit of fiberglass to kind of fill in some, some cracks and, and chips on it. Um, you can see where this, this boat steps, so the, um, uh, sorry, I'm still learning terminology, but the, uh, part of the mast that, that actually goes on the track, it goes str straight in through that. You got a little opening there, and then it goes straight up that that groove about the top here and then around your around that pulley there um, and then the uh, this boom I am 90% sure that this star of life as a mast that someone recut to be used as a boom instead um, it's got this Proctor mass sticker on it and it's kind of rough on the end like it was already cut down and it's um the kind of the placing of the uh the hardware on it kind of leaves me think it might have been off of a catamaran um at least the ones that i've seen but that's actually in okay places for use on this boat as well the only difference is that this is an 11 foot boom and i need a 10 foot so i'll end up cutting that last foot off the edge there and 
you can see where they made like a wooden plug on this side for, for the eye bolt. And I might make a new version of that as well as one for this other end out of some aluminum to, uh, uh, for one, give a, you know, it's not going to rot like the wood. It'll give it a little better fit. Um, but at least on, on the end here, I'll give a place for the, uh, um, for the sail, uh, the, the, the blocks there to come around. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'm s still learning about this stuff. But yeah, main part right now has been getting this fiberglass stuff done. Um, something I'm going to be starting on for too much longer is I need to get either need to find a good used one or make a uh, a cover for the companionway there for the top side because uh, right now when it rains it just goes right into the bilge um, and it kind of fills up in, in the middle there. So if I can get that covered up and get my covers made for these holes, um, then uh, that, that's going to keep a lot of the fresh water out of this thing. So, yeah, that's where it's at.